Hi everybody, this is Mr. Duncan in England. How are you today? Welcome to another live stream. And yes, I am with you once again on a Sunday afternoon because this is live English. Here we go again. Have you washed your hands? Are you all nice and clean? Ready for another super duper live show? Yes, it is. English Addict live on a Sunday from the birthplace of the English language, which just happens to be English. Here we go again. Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Duncan in England. How are you today? Are you OK? I hope so. Are you happy? Are you happy today? I really hope you are happy because I'm feeling OK. Not too bad. One of the reasons why I feel happy is because yesterday I had a chance to see my mother. We went across to where my mother is staying at the moment. She is being taken care of, but hopefully soon she will be going home. We are hoping, however, because of certain circumstances which are now occurring, certain situations that we all find ourselves heavily, deeply involved in, there is a chance that my mother won't be going back home just yet. But fortunately, yesterday we were able to see her. However, it might be a long time before we can see her again. So happy, but also a little bit sad as well. Of course, I don't need to mention the situation, although we will be talking about it today. We are talking about lots of things today. We are talking about words you can use to describe something that isn't real, because last week I was talking about reality and real things and the things that we can see around us and the things that we judge as real. So I thought it would be fun to have a look at some words that express the opposite, which is fake things that are unreal or don't relate to reality. So I thought we would look at that in a few moments. Lots of people already joining me. And yes, of course, 
we have almost made it to the end of the weekend i hope your weekend is going well so far despite all of the problems in the world yes it's sunday We are hoping to have Mr. Steve with us later on. Yeah, I, I didn't mean to press that button. I'm sorry. I, 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 I'm very sorry. I didn't mean to press that button. I pressed the wrong one. I was supposed to press the other button, but unfortunately I pressed that button instead i'm ever so sorry please forgive me i've had a very busy weekend hello to everyone who has joined us on the live stream it's nice to see you here maybe you have no choice maybe you have no choice about sitting in front of your computer because now you are isolating yourself from other people so this is a situation that is being talked about everywhere last night after i got home after visiting my mother i got back home and i put the television on and i watched the news i know i know it was a mistake to put the news on and all they were talking about was coronavirus all they were talking about was coronavirus this and coronavirus that viruses here viruses there viruses everywhere so the news wasn't really discussing anything else so it's almost as if nothing else is happening in the world at the moment only coronavirus however there are many other things happening in the world many things happening that are related not directly but they are related to coronavirus so maybe sporting events so maybe you were going to see a football match or maybe you were going to see a movie at the cinema and now you can't because those places have been closed down or maybe the event you were going to see has been cancelled cancelled later on we are going to have a look at some buzzwords relating to coronavirus and i thought why not i know we shouldn't be talking about it all the time however i thought we would have a look at some coronavirus buzzwords after mr steve joins us in around about 20 minutes so there are many words that people are using there are some words that have been created just for this event some words that i've never heard before words i have never used in my life so we'll be talking about that a little bit later on something happy something positive outside the window oh there it is some nice springtime color so there is the view right now it's a little bit dull today i will be honest with you it is a little dull not very bright very cloudy but at least it's not raining last night we had a terrible rainstorm it kept me awake all night because the rain was falling on my roof and it was making a lot of noise to be honest so there it is right now the view outside my window <laughs> i pressed the right button this time isn't that good very nice hello to the live chat oh lots of people already waiting patiently to say hello on the live chat hello to alan gear oh hello alan gear guess what you are first on today's live chat I really can't control my excitement. Hello, Alan Gear. Welcome, and it's nice to see you here today. Lee Julia is here as well. Grace Chin, Louis Mendez, 
also berlin for you haven't seen you for a long time i know that you used to watch my live streams very regularly also marwa palmyra is here of course don't forget palmyra and lewis are two of my moderators so don't forget behave yourself <laughs> no naughty behavior no swearing <laughs> no bullying or you might get kicked off <laughs> by my bodyguards my live chat bodyguards oh very nice christina is here how are you mr duncan and mr steve i am locked in the house but it is necessary to struggle or fight against so you are fighting against something or you are trying to stop something from getting worse so christina i'm sorry to hear that you are stuck in your house however i can make one promise now i am going to make a promise and you can record this and you can say mr duncan do you remember when you made that promise so now i am going to hold my hand up i'm going to put my hand on my heart you can't see it but my hand is on my heart and i'm going to say now that whatever happens i will be here with you I will not leave you I will not go away whatever happens as long as I have my internet connection here I will be with you whatever happens I swear that I will be right here so even if we all eventually have to stay in our houses I can promise you now I will stay here with you I will be your company and we can talk about anything so maybe we can talk about lots and lots of different subjects whilst we are all in isolation it hasn't happened yet here in the uk we haven't done it yet however things are changing much slower here in the uk so we aren't being so cautious here in the uk i don't know why some people think it's a good idea whilst others think it is a bad idea but apparently it all relates to to this particular thing that i'm going to show you now so apparently it all relates to this and this is a way of stopping too many people becoming ill at the same time so what you are trying to do you are trying to get rid of that huge peak of people becoming ill so you are trying to spread the curve so you can see without protective measure measures more people will become ill straight away but if you protect yourself if you make sure that you don't spread the virus then you can make sure that there aren't lots of people becoming ill at the same time however i suppose it would be fair to say that over the same period of time you might find that there will be still lots of people unwell however what it means is the hospitals won't have to deal with lots of people all at once so you are making sure that there aren't too many people becoming ill at the same time so prevention is always a good way of stopping bad things from happening i think so prevention is always a good thing so wherever you are wherever you are watching at the moment don't worry i will be here in fact if things get worse i might actually be with you more often so who knows you might have daily lessons because maybe i will have to stay at home just in case so i will be here whatever happens i can reassure you right now hello to belarusia hello belarusia another one of our moderators nice to see you here today vitas new win is here watching in vietnam a big hello to everyone watching in vietnam at the moment mog mog amit hugo hello hugo i love your name by the way there was a movie a few years ago called hugo 
hello also to Anna Kobe Abril Eleanor RHS Zhu Yen Nguyen once again watching in Vietnam I think Mirella Powell also Chris Merrolls Irene Wow a lot of people joining me already so early on the live stream nice to see you here today Beatriz is here it's raining where I am says Beatriz I'm sorry to hear that but here it isn't raining although it did earlier it was very heavy the rain this morning Da Judex says good day Mr Duncan and all of my fellows I hope everybody is doing great don't forget to follow the preventative tips about the coronavirus yes well I've been washing my hands as you know I always carry my hand sanitizer everywhere so yesterday when I went to see my mother I made sure that I put lots of hand sanitizer on my hands to keep everything clean so when I went to see my mother anything that may be on the outside will not come in and affect my mother because she's not young anymore I think it would be fair to say that my mother is definitely on the list of people who are very vulnerable of course the thing to bear in mind is quite often we forget that there are people of all ages who are vulnerable to infections and viruses for example maybe people who are receiving treatment for cancer also have low immunity their immunity is low so infections or viruses will attack their body much easier so it isn't just the elderly it is also people who are taking or having certain types of treatment medical treatment as well Suzika is here Pachu my Trang Alessandro hi Mr Duncan how are you here in the UK or there in the UK how is it going you know in Italy we are in lockdown lockdown in Italy so now I have lots of time for watching your live chat as I said a few moments ago whatever happens whatever occurs I promise I will be here with you for now you can catch me every Sunday Wednesday and Friday at 2 p.m. UK time so that is when I am live with you every Sunday Wednesday Friday 2 p.m. UK time if you are wondering and also don't forget I love to see your likes so please give me a big like and if you like what you see subscribe as well I would appreciate that very much very very nice anything else to mention nothing to mention except hello and greetings to wherever you are in the world hello Hugo again hello Mr Duncan from Carolina Carolina del Norte oh I like the sound of that that sounds very exotic hello also Cory also we have practice bang hello practice bang I'm very intrigued by your name another thing I want to talk about now <sighs> do you know a person in your life do you know anyone in your life who is stubborn stubborn it's a great word so this word describes a person who will not change their ways or maybe they refuse to change their behavior or maybe they refuse to change their mind about something so perhaps you tell them something and their opinion is wrong but your opinion is right however they won't see your point of view they refuse to see your point of view so they refuse to change their mind or change their opinion however you might describe them as being stubborn a stubborn person is someone 
who won't do something so maybe they refuse to do something a stubborn person do you know someone who is stubborn in your family go on shame them now stubborn shaming <laughs> another word we can use is obstinate oh i like that word oh now there is a very interesting word obstinate an obstinate person is a person who is stubborn they refuse to accept any advice they refuse to change their mind or they refuse to do something so an obstinate person is stubborn stubborn a stubborn person another word we can use is i suppose unmoved if a person is unmoved it means they will not change their opinion they will not change their thoughts or their ideas they are unmoved they will not change their mind we can also say adamant adamant a person who is adamant is a person who will stick to their beliefs a person who will not change their mind a person who will not give way to another person they will stay with their ideas and their thoughts and their opinions they will remain adamant adamant <laughs> here's another one. Oh, this is a bit naughty i do apologize for this word but this this is a very good way of describing a person who is stubborn we might describe a person who is stubborn as pig-headed pig-headed a pig-headed person is a person who maybe maybe they are very selfish in their behavior but also they will not listen to other people they think that they are always right they are always right about everything and they won't change their mind even if the thing they believe in is untrue or not real they are pig headed a pig headed person arrogant a person who is arrogant and pig headed is someone who won't listen to other people you won't listen to other people they are inflexible an inflexible person will not change they will not change their mind so you might describe a person as inflexible if they are inflexible they won't change their mind they won't change their opinion they are completely inflexible they won't change their opinion <laughs> oh here's a good one a person who is very stubborn so you can say stubborn as a mule a stubborn person is a person who will not change their mind so maybe if you imagine an animal maybe you are trying to take your dog for a walk but the dog doesn't want to go with you so the dog will try to pull away the dog doesn't want to go for a walk with you the dog is being stubborn but in this sense of course we are using mule mule so a mule is a type of horse donkey <laughs> it looks like a donkey but it might also be a mule a horse so it has the characteristics of a donkey and a horse have you ever seen a mule it is a very strange looking animal so as stubborn as a mule and i suppose finally we can say that a person who is stubborn is a person who is fixed in their opinion they won't change their mind about what is going on so maybe you try to convince someone to change their mind or to behave in a certain way some people are being very stubborn about coronavirus because they are refusing to wash their hands all the time some people are refusing to 
stay isolated some people refuse to do it they are being very stubborn so a person who has a fixed opinion a person is fixed in their opinion about something they won't change their mind that is what they believe and there is nothing you can say to change their mind they are stubborn so what about you do you, do you know any stubborn people a stubborn person a person who will not listen to advice they will not change their mind my mother can i just let you in on a little secret my mother can sometimes be stubborn mm, that's all i'm saying <laughs> please don't tell my mother i said that please because the next time i see her she will put me over her knee and slap my bottom sport is one of the many things that is being cancelled at the moment and i thought it would be nice to remember the days when we used to go outside when we used to go into our gardens when we used to go and see our local football team playing but of course at the moment because of coronavirus everything has been cancelled so i thought it would be nice to show you something that reminds me of last summer when lots of people were playing football I hope you are feeling good today it is Sunday the weekend is still here don't worry we still have the weekend to enjoy together and as I said whatever happens in the world I will be here in this little box on your screen so don't worry I will not leave you alone whatever happens hello to the live chat once again we do have Steve joining us soon today i am doing something slightly different because we are just going to have steve walk on there will be no tempting mr steve one of the reasons is because he can't wait to come on he can't wait to to come here to talk to you because he's had all week without anything to say on the internet so today I think Mr. Steve is feeling very excited to come on and talk to you. He has a lot of things he wants to discuss. We were talking about things that are real and unreal last week. Well, we were talking about reality last week. Did you see my live stream last week? I was outside and I was talking about real things, reality. However, there are lots of words we can use to describe things that are not real, such as fake, 
something is fake it is not real something that is artificial is fake maybe we can also say we can say unreal so something that is unreal is fake it is something that is not the real thing I'm sorry that man over there he is wearing a wig his hair is unreal it's not real it's unreal maybe if you see something on television that is supposed to be real maybe if you watch reality TV you might see something that is staged so it isn't real it is being performed it is something that is not real so quite often when you watch television do you watch reality TV quite often reality TV is not real it is actually staged it is pretend it is not real it is put on so put on means well it can mean two things it can mean to put clothes on your body so you put on your clothes however we can also say put on if something is being done but it's not real it is just pretend you put on something you don't mean it it is not genuine it is not real pretend so you might be pretending to do something I know when I was a child I always used to pretend to be a certain character from Star Wars I know I've mentioned this before so when I was a little boy I used to pretend to be a character from Star Wars <laughs> you know which one I'm on about what do you mean Jar Jar Binks how cheeky how rude how dare you wait there <laughs> how dare you yes thank you Greta how dare you so pretend to do something that isn't real you pretend children often pretend stage you stage something you stage something to make it look real imitate imitate is copy so maybe you copy something to make it look like the real thing imitate some people can imitate certain sounds they are very clever because they can imitate other sounds some people can imitate the sound of other people's voices imitate so if something is being imitated it is being copied it is not the real thing Ooh, virtualize oh I like that word now that is a super word virtualize if you virtualize something it means you make it real you make it appear real quite often in computers or in computing you will often say virtualize so you represent something on a computer to make it look as if it is the real thing you virtualize something I like that one simulate is another one so you are not doing the real thing you are simulating something you are doing something but it isn't the real thing it is simulated so if you simulate it means you copy you do something but it isn't the real thing oh I like this one if you are a fan of Blade Runner you will know this word replicate you copy something that looks exactly like the thing that you are copying from so if you replicate something it means copy you make an exact copy or something that looks realistic replicate I like that one if you replicate something the thing you replicate is a replica replica the word replica means something that has been copied it is a copy of something replica I like that one 
maybe you are a person who wants to make your own money some people do that even though that nowadays it is much harder to copy money forge if you forge something it means you copy something exactly quite often you might write something or you might print something forge so some people will forge money they will make money even though it's not real money they will forge the money we will describe that thing as a forgery i'm sorry we can't accept that money it isn't real it's a forgery forgery Ooh, i like that one here's another one <laughs> maybe smoke screen you are trying to deceive someone by giving them a false impression you might use a smoke screen so this particular phrase is used as a sort of representation of deceiving someone you try to do something that appears like something else you are trying to hide the truth you are trying to disguise the truth you use a smoke screen a smoke screen so it's not literal also a falsehood can be something that's not real it is a lie you tell a falsehood something is not real it is false then we have oh i like this one we have untruth so an untruth is something that is not true untruth you might tell an untruth an untruth deception well you use something that isn't real to deceive someone you use deception i like that word that's a good word as well finally i suppose if you want to pretend or maybe you want to cheat or maybe you want to give a false impression you can always lie so lie deceive something that is not real something that is untrue is a lie so i hope you enjoyed those words so that clears all of the conversation we had last week about reality so real things fake things truth dishonesty real fake <sighs> oh my goodness i've just noticed there are lots of people chatting away and i think quite a few of you are excited because mr steve will be here soon however before we have that we are going to have an excerpt from one of my many many english lessons on youtube and this particular lesson is all about something which i think is very topical a lot of people are talking about human behavior at the moment and also our bad habits hi everybody this is mr duncan in england how are you today are you okay i hope so are you happy i hope so in today's lesson we will talk about the awkward and some would say embarrassing subject of our faults and bad habits do you like my nose i picked it myself the word fault means something that is not perfect or isn't completely correct there are other words that can be connected to fault such as abnormality blemish defacement defect disfigurement failing flaw imperfection and irregularity <laughs> Oh, 
All of those words you just heard relate to the appearance of something or how it looks. However, the word fault can also be used to show a wrong action. We can say, it is your fault. That is your mistake. You did that wrong. That happened because of you. You must take the blame for this. You really screwed up. When we use these sentences, we are telling the other person that they are responsible for the mistake. We are blaming them for it. Of course, a fault can also be related to another part of our behaviour. Bad habits. Bad habits are things we do that annoy other people, or may appear unpleasant, rude, or even dangerous. There are many bad habits around. For example, <coughs> biting your fingernails, talking with your mouth for the food, picking your nose. Not taking a regular bath or shower. Being late for an appointment. Watching too much TV. Oh, 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 oh. <sighs> Drinking too much alcohol, such as beer and wine. Smoking cigarettes! <laughs> Not changing your socks! <laughs> Talking for ages on the phone! <laughs> there are other words that can be used to describe our personal habits, such as custom eccentricity, foible, idiosyncrasy, oddness, peculiarity, quirk, routine, and shortcoming. What's that smell? Oh no! It is fair to say that nobody is perfect. We all have little habits or something we do that annoys others. Sometimes they may be hard to accept. They can even lead to the breakup of relationships such as marriage. So it is true to say that everyone has some little fault that is a part of his or her character. The only way to really deal with it is to try and live with it. Or the consequences could be disastrous. <laughs> of course, now it isn't October. Don't worry about that. Just ignore that bit. <laughs> that doesn't matter. Trust me. Trust me. <laughs> However, it is definitely time to learn English because it's English Addict on Sunday. Oh, my goodness. I can't believe it is Sunday already. Have you had a good week? Or should I say more importantly, have you had a good weekend? I really hope you have. So... Here we are, slightly later than usual. However, he is about to come onto your screens. I know a lot of people are crazy about this guy. They love this guy so much. I don't know why, by the way. Even his mother can't stand him, really, to be honest with you. Here he comes. Yes, everyone, it's time to have a big round of applause and welcome because it's time <laughs> to say all aboard the steve train oh 
it isn't working my choo-choo isn't working why isn't my choo-choo working i can't believe that after all that build-up my choo-choo isn't working where's my choo-choo gone well that's not very nice is it i've lost my choo-choo <laughs> i'm gonna see if i can find it there it is there's my choo-choo let's try it again shall we all aboard the steve train Fast are we going, Mr. Duncan? Very fast. I'm all hot. Let's just Hello everybody. Let's just hope we don't go off the rails. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. Ah can, that's a joke. Can I just ask a question? Why yes. why are you taller than me? Because I am taller than you, Mr. Duncan. What's the matter? What's, are you uh what's, what's, have you shrunk what's, during the week, Mr. Duncan? What, what, have you shrunk? What's going on? Nothing's going on at all. Nothing's going on at all. <laughs> <laughs> How can you grow? How can you grow seven inches in a week? Very easily, Mr. Duncan, with my health regime. Oh, OK, if you say so. Do you want a mint? Why? <laughs> have you got one? I'm not saying, but... <laughs> Go on, then. I'll have a mint. Have a Tic Tac. You normally get me something to eat, Mr. Duncan. Um, for me to, to lure me on, to mm. lure me on. Well, as I mentioned earlier, I think Steve is a little bit excited because you have so much to talk about today we went to see my mum yesterday we, we weren't did. we weren't sure if we could do it because lots of places now are are not allowing people to come in they're not allowing people to walk in especially where there are people who are unwell or maybe people who are elderly so yes a lot of people are being told not to visit their friends and family in hospital or in care homes yes so it looks as if yesterday might be the last time that I see my mother for a while for, for some a... time it could well be yes um well, yes we were surprised but we phoned up beforehand and they said phoned up beforehand okay so we phoned some time before we went mm -hmm. and uh, they said yes fine as long as you haven't been abroad on holiday no nope. Which we have definitely haven't been. We definitely haven't been on holiday. And as long as we hadn't got a sore throat or a cough or nope. a temperature. No. Nope. Check, check, check. No to that. Mm -hmm. And uh, as long as we wiped our hands in sanitising gel. There we go. See, I have Every two minutes while we were there. I will put some on Mr. Steve's uh, head. And, um, I don't know what... I wonder what germs and bugs are crawling around on the top of Mr. Steve's head. Shall I put... I think I have to put some of this on your head, Steve. Oh, no, please don't. I hate the smell of that. Yeah, there you go. That's it. Mr. Duncan's hand gel it smells horrible. That's it. I can safely say that Mr. Steve's head has now been sanitised. You don't know where it's been. <laughs> <laughs> no, the problem is I do know where it's been. <laughs> Thank you to everybody who's saying hello to me and hello to you all back. Too many to mention, Mr Duncan. There are so many of them. So it's lovely to be back. It is. Yet again, um, I was going to do some, uh, some gardening today, but it's still very wet outside from all the extreme weather that we've been having over the past few months there is the view outside now oh look there's a little pigeon sitting in the tree the pigeons at the moment they are all trying to find a mate oh they're getting very frisky very excited because it is the mating season for lots of birds so there you can see in the distance there is a pigeon sitting alone waiting patiently maybe it is a male waiting for a female to come along could be or it might be a female waiting for a male to come along and say hey hi there lady pigeon you are gorgeous come on let's go let's fly away together and make some babies another bird just flew into the 
tree there, just on to the to the right. Oh, I see. I of the pigeon, another little bird there on a branch. There we go. Oh, yes. It just flew off. I don't know what that was. Anyway, that's another... the tree that I planted seven years ago. Yes, and it it uh, was probably about as high as my waist when I put it in. Maybe a bit higher. Just a few inches. It was no. It was about three foot high when I put it in. Okay. It now must be at least three or four meters tall. Yes, it's very tall now. I don't know what meters are. Three uh, or four feet, then. I don't know what meters are. You do. I have no idea. You're what... about two meters, aren't you? Yes. Tall? I don't know. I don't. Give Something me feet. Like that. Feet. Feet and inches. Very easy, Mr. Duncan. It is about three feet in a meter approximately care. a yard and a meter is a they're approximately the same i don't care i don't care i'm uh, being I, I am being very stubborn <laughs> there we go since the because, 1970s in because fact. steve we looked at that word this morning we looked at stubborn you see earlier, really earlier. really stubborn okay. you can be very stubborn sometimes steve the other night got very angry with me do you want to know why mr steve got angry something very simple this Steve got really angry because I didn't he, get really angry. He said my slippers were really stinky. So the next day I actually washed them. I, I went into the kitchen. I got lots of hot water in a bucket and I washed my slippers. And now now my slippers are nice and clean, Steve. They are they are OK. They're, they're much nicer. Would you like a smell? No, thanks. Go on. No, thanks. Go on. Smell. No, thanks. Smell my slipper. It's not the slippers that need cleaning now. It's your feet. Go on. Sniff my slipper. He's cleaned those. I bet he didn't clean his feet. Sniff my slipper. No, thank you, Mr. Duncan. It's OK uh, now. They're, they're nice and clean now. I washed them. So Steve was getting very upset. He was very angry about my stinky slippers, but they're not stinky anymore because I washed them. So, so well, then. look what Dad Judead says. Microbiologist. Are you really a microbiologist? OK, well, you're the perfect person to ask all the questions about uh, uh, the coronavirus. Hmm. I'd like to be bored like Mr. Steve. So Mr. Duncan can sanitize my head. Yes, you see. You see how lucky you are. That's Steve. a new fetish you've created, Mr. Duncan. There are people who want me to rub things into their bald head however some people don't have a bald head so you are lucky we're not all blessed like what i am mm, definitely yes it's getting uh, people been talking about coronavirus a lot of people are already yes. in isolation wow they are cut off from the outside world because of this damn corona bug well we know we know italy is i think spain is as well and is france have france told everybody to stay indoors i think they have i heard this morning they are now on the news many countries now uh, the latest of course being yesterday vietnam hello to vietnam if you are wow. going to be in isolation because i know the border around vietnam is being closed is it really so yes so, so many countries now are doing this spain is also one of the latest countries to stop mm. flights. So now you can't fly in or out of Spain, certainly not from the UK. Most flights have now been cancelled. They've been suspended. Ooh. So, yeah. so this is where you can come while you're sitting at home doing nothing. Uh, you've, you, you, your government told you to stay at home. This is your ideal opportunity over the next few months to really brush up on your English and learn as much as possible well, by watching Mr Duncan. This is what I said. So whatever happens, no matter what happens, I actually gave an oath earlier. Right. An I, oath. I swore, I held up my hand and I swore to everyone I said that I, whatever happens, however bad things get, I will be here. So even if you are in self-isolation, even if you are alone during the coronavirus outbreak, I will still be here and I might be here every day if things get really bad. Well, I might be with you because um, <laughs> you even though it appears that the UK is adopting a different policy to the rest of Europe and to the, almost the rest of the world in mm. that they're not telling us to isolate, no. at least not at the moment. And it looks like they're not going to no. unless you're elderly. Mm. However, in fairness, um, can I just say in fairness, they are they are uh, stopping 
all sporting events or maybe things where lots of people are gathering together so yes. many sporting events or any outdoor events where crowds of people will gather they have actually been cancelled and so, of course the, the problem is the issue is some people can work from home like mr duncan yeah, i'm very mr lucky. duncan is always working from home so this is it so it doesn't matter what happens i can still be here with you but for example my job and a lot of other people there's only so much you can do from home mm. um and um i mean my job is to visit i'm in sales so i have to visit customers mm. but even if i could speak to them on the phone a lot of those will be at home as well so yep. there'll be very little for people to do at home even if their jobs can be done at home because all the other people who may you may be in normal contact with mm. uh, will be not working and not at their offices well, what if you work in a coffee um, shop or a restaurant well, I mean, yes. you, you can't serve food from home through the internet can you really you can't push the food through the computer into someone's pocket or into their hand and we're waiting to see um who i mean some companies if you, if you work in the the uh retail sector retail or if you work in hospitality in hotels and bars and restaurants and or coffee shops you can't work from home and will your government be um helping you to survive because we know that a large proportion of people uh, really can only survive from one paycheck to the next yes so uh, unless they get support from the government a lot of companies are going to go bankrupt mm. a lot of people are going to get into financial difficulty yeah and not just um, not just here so we're not just talking about you no you. everywhere i'm talking everywhere about, all, yes. all the countries Ooh, around the world look, i've got an itchy nose of course i'm touching my face which is almost impossible not to not to uh, not to do Apparently, we touch our face about once every two to three minutes on average. That Mr. Duncan, stop poking me! Uh, I don't know where those fingers have been. Oh, Mr. Duncan, I feel I feel dirty. Um, yes, it's we're, it, this is unprecedented in probably for a hundred years. But uh, this is the place to come, isn't it, Mr. Duncan, to escape all your worries and fears about you coronavirus forget all about that Get all about that and learn english um and i mean if i'm at work at we're having to work from home i'm going to be joining you i think aren't i yeah so whatever happens i will be here i will be here teaching english talking about english but now we can forget all about the coronavirus we can forget all about the bad news because today we are talking about oh hang on we're talking about coronavirus buzzwords. There's okay. a lot of them. OK, so maybe we, we won't be forgetting about it. <laughs> it's topical, Mr. Duncan. It's a topical subject. It is topical. That means it's in popular use at the moment. Yes. Everyone's talking about it. So or, or you might say hot topic. So a hot topic is something that people are talking about all the time uh, or maybe during a certain period of time. So today, maybe coronavirus uh, or the coronavirus buzzwords. Here's a good one, Steve. Here's a here's a good word for our buzzwords. Pandemic. Pandemic. Yes. And this is something that, that, that the World Health Authority has recently said we are now going to say that the coronavirus outbreak is now a pandemic. So we have, well, there is another word, isn't there, Steve? Epidemic. Yes. So epidemic means maybe an illness or disease that's spreading in a localised place. In one, say, one country. One country. However, pandemic, there it is, pandemic means... Throughout the entire world everywhere yes pan, all pan means everywhere yes. doesn't it so when we talk about pan it means just spread over a huge area or in this case all around the world so many countries now are reporting cases of coronavirus and they have declared it as a pandemic uh, there's one country where it hasn't been reported and that's antarctica 
Uh, hardly surprising because there aren't many people there. But that apparently is the only... So strictly speaking, it's not a pandemic because it's not in Antarctica. But of course, yeah. technically, because there's nobody living there, mm. Just, uh, then it is. Is it? Is it the penguins that live... Or the polar bears. Oh, no, Antarctica is oh, the polar yes, bears. We got mixed up with that a few months ago, we, didn't we? We got into a lot of trouble. Yes. Can I just tell you how much trouble? It was in all of the newspapers. There were people outside my door with 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 burning torches. They wanted to set fire to the house. They wanted to hang Mr. Steve by his feet. Uh, and they wanted to do all sorts of things to me. Some of some of the things I, I actually was hoping they would do, to be honest. But yes, I said that penguins and polar bears lived in the same place, which, of course, they don't. They don't. So you've got in the north. I think it's the north. You have the polar bears. I'm not going to even pretend. And in the south. That I know. The south, the Antarctic, it is the penguins now Mirella Obradovic says uh, take two to one mixture of baking soda and vitamin C okay so are you saying to prevent the coronavirus of course what we're going to get is a lot of people coming up with their own health cures mm. uh, to try and help you uh, not get this disease. Uh, so baking soda and vitamin C, are you saying that you actually take this in into your body? Do you drink it? Uh, certainly vitamin C for for many years has been put about as as cure for the common cold. Mm. Uh, and there is some evidence to suggest that it will help you get over the illness quicker yes if you take high doses of vitamin c but the the results aren't particularly conclusive so most of these um, things are, are about immunity really isn't it it's about strengthening your body so it can fight off all of these things yes. when they when they invade your body but the the, the things that really boost your immune these things like vitamin c echinacea Okay. is something that I take as well, echinacea drops, which I think help to fight off colds and flus. But they really are sort of tinkering around the edges. The, the, main, the main element to you resisting this disease and getting over it quickly is your own immune system. Mm. And there, there are things that you can do apart from taking supplements, which mm. will be more beneficial to you, like, for example, taking regular exercise, mm. Um, Although at the moment I wouldn't do that. Not getting well on your own. Not yeah. Yes. Don't go to a gym at the moment. Don't Taking go to a gym regular or, exercise or, or walk around the town where there are lots of people. So maybe you can stay in the house and maybe you can just walk around your house. Sunlight is a good boost for your immune system because vitamin D uh, is then manufactured in 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 your body. So that's good for you. Mm -hmm. uh, vitamin D. Get plenty of sleep. It sounds obvious, but if you get plenty of sleep, that really keeps your immune system in peak working order. If you're tired, if you feel tired, then your immune system will be tired as well and it won't be working as effectively. Mm. And try and avoid stress, mm. things that get you anxious and, uh, and upset because when you get stressed, your body produces cortisol in the body okay, that's, that's and and no uh, and that suppresses your immune system so you want to get plenty of sleep stay away from stress yes. take exercise and get plenty of sleep yes uh and those will be more beneficial to you than probably any supplement that you could take i'm starting to sleep now just listening to your ex trying ex to give some practical advice your explanation is making me people. your explanation is making me want to sleep I think it's sooner or later we're probably all going to get this disease or okay. at least probably 60 80 percent of us will before okay. it dies out so okay, we've okay. got to try and be as fit and healthy as we can that's it and maybe cheer uh, up a bit as no, well I, 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 this is cheerful this is practical advice mr duncan um i mean i'm no i'm <laughs> Today, no uh, well i am a sort of a biologist but I, i'm i'm not a an immunologist i'm not a, an expert in immunology but sleep uh, okay we've, we've just told us this I know yes exactly am, is, I, am is, I watching the replay you know, and <laughs> I mean people said the other thing I think is quite dangerous Mr Duncan is that, that? Uh, 
People say that if you get a cold or a flu or a fever, you should drink whiskey and alcohol. But I'm not so sure that that is good for you because alcohol will suppress your immune system. Yes. So I can't see how alcohol is going to be a good idea if you catch coronavirus, mm. apart from maybe <laughs> making you feel better mentally. But yeah, I don't think it's going to help your body fight the infection. OK, anyway, um, we've got some more words to look at, Steve. As usual, <laughs> as usual, Steve does not know when to stop. Well, yeah, I, just, I just think oh. these things are important to get across to people. OK, then, as long as they are uh, valid. Spread. Now, this is a word a lot of people have been using spread. So spread is is movement. So maybe you can spread something by force. You might spread some butter on a nice hot piece of toast or on a tea cake. Yes. Or a hot cross bun. Oh, are we having hot cross buns later? I'm having yes. a hot cross bun and Steve will be having a tea cake because he is very stubborn. Not stubborn. I just uh, I just get indigestion with uh, <laughs> okay. with uh, hot crust buns, so Good. I'm going to have a tea cake instead. Okie dokie, no problem. Spread. spread. So spread. So if we are talking about coronavirus, it is actually the transferring of the virus from one person to another. So as the virus moves around, as it multiplies and goes from one person to another, it is spreading so the coronavirus is spreading it will spread as people catch it so one person will give it to another person and then that person will give it to someone else and maybe they will come into contact with three or four people and then suddenly they, those people will also get it and that's how you spread the coronavirus spread isolate now here is a word we've been hearing a lot about isolate you isolate what would you say steve yes you keep yourself to yourself uh, self isolate is the phrase that they're using a lot in the uk so you make the decision based on the fact that you might have uh you might suspect that you could have the virus mm. so you could have a temperature a cough uh, breathing difficulties they're the common um, symptoms of this particular virus and then because you don't want to pass it on to other people particularly vulnerable people elderly or people with uh, comorbidities they might have diabetes they might have a chest problem okay things like that um, then you what their government are here telling you to do is stay indoors yes actually i'm talking about the meaning of isolate so isolate. Oh, isolate. yes, that is to take something, isn't it? That's to uh, isolate means to separate and take out something mm. and put it away from everything else. Yes. So quite often in medicine, if a person becomes very sick or maybe the illness they have is very infectious. Now, I don't think I've included that word, but infectious. Infectious. Is a great... So the coronavirus is. Touch my nose. Doing all the all the wrong things, Mr. Duncan. The coronavirus oh. is infectious, so it it can be passed from one person to another. It is infectious. So a person who has an, a serious illness that they might pass to another person, they will often isolate themselves. So that is the reason why people are using this word a lot. Isolate. You put yourself away from other people, so you yes. can't spread the illness and going back to infectious sorry mr Duncan. no it's okay um different diseases have different rates of infection so some are more infectious uh than others so flu for example the flu bug is highly infectious so you if you sneeze it means that what it what that means is that you can pass the disease on to a lot of people quite quickly and it's very easy for other people to catch it i think it's possible if you've got flu, you can pass it on to many, many people, dozens of people. But with this uh, particular virus, the coronavirus, it's not as doesn't appear to be as infectious. Yeah. So it it appears that it's not as easy to catch as flu. Okay. 
uh, that's what the that's what they actually are beginning to discover about it. So yes. you've got to be quite close to someone for a period of time, whereas with flu, you can pick it up very, very easily. Mm. Um, so they say to, to make sure you don't spread it, you either stay away from people altogether or you stay a safe distance away. So this is the word that I was coming on to, Steve, self-isolation. So the yes. actual action, the action of being alone, you remove yourself from society, you have self-isolation. So this is very interesting. We are using this as a prefix to show that the thing that is happening is being done by the person who is doing it. So self as a prefix means that you are doing it yourself, self-isolation. Yes. So self-portrait is another one. So if you paint a picture, but it is of you, first of all, you might be a little bit of a narcissist and also you are doing it yourself. So it is a painting or a picture that you are doing of yourself, a self-taken photograph. So a photograph that you take on your mobile phone or as we call it now selfie a selfie pappy there has brought out another word um contagious oh contagious which is a similar word to uh infectious uh and it does mean of course that you can pass it from one person to another mm. it is contagious yes but uh, so we can say that the virus is contagious that's passing from person to person but in a in a sort of a more upbeat way, you could say that learning English is contagious. Yes. Something that you enjoy doing is contagious because you mention it to somebody else and they get quite excited uh, and they like doing it. And then they mention it to somebody else and then they do it as well. You see? So you can talk about things that you do yes. as being contagious behaviours. And, and eventually the person will become an English addict. And that, uh -huh. That's what we do, you see. We are the English addict youtube channel and that's what we do here we talk about english we have lots of viewers every week who watch on sunday wednesday and friday at 2 p.m uk time however if things get worse i might be here all the time i might be here every day with you who knows who yes. knows what the future will hold alexandro makes a good point um mm. I'm very concerned that in the UK, the people are going around and are not in state of isolation. Mm. I love you immensely, UK uh, people. The situation in Italy is critical. Yes. Well, Alex Alexandro, um, this decision by the UK government to tell us not to isolate is very controversial here mm. at the moment because it appears that we are doing something very different than other countries governments are suggesting and uh, we'll have to wait and see why that there is some science behind this um, but uh, of course there are a lot of people suggesting that a lot of scientists are saying to the government look it's about time you told people to stay indoors and shut yeah. all the bars and the restaurants but we seem to be adopting a different policy here mm. um, so we'll have to wait and see whether that stays as it is i think yes. or, or whether you know we, we actually um carry on with this i mean we've heard something quite almost disturbing it's it's it, it, the, the suggestion is that in the uk what they want to do is get a lot of people infected mm. <laughs> well quite quickly um to develop some immunity in the whole population and then that will end it quickly but yes. The, the con con controversy there is that that could cause a lot of unnecessary deaths. Yes. It's like we, it's like the government here want to get it over and done with very quickly. Hmm. Um, but anyway, anyway, we have to we, we defer are, to uh, the experts. I am trying to show some words here because there might be some people who don't understand any of those words, by the way, Steve. Yes. You know, they might only be able to say hello and goodbye. So we have to be careful not to get too carried away when we're explaining things. However... However, there are people. It's a bit like Brexit, isn't it? So we're having like coronavirus Brexit. So you might say that some people want to 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 stay active and just do their normal day to day routine to do things normally. However, there are other people 
they want to stay isolated and protect themselves so there, there does seem to be a split in, in the in the things that people want to do it's, yes. a, it's just like brexit <laughs> it is a uh, very good tomek laughter is contagious it is uh, so one person starts laughing it makes other people want to mm. laugh it passes around yeah. very easily i mean you especially so you steve that. you you uh, you love laughing and laughing and laughing don't you i've got laughter lines because i laugh so much okay uh, uh, i was uh, trying to set you up for something there were you yeah so uh, Corey v says that uh, they have the duncan virus <laughs> Dear. DV. <laughs> that's I think that's probably that that is worse than coronavirus. Yes. That's that's incurable. You've got that for life now. I'm sorry. Angela says it would be amazing to see you every day. Well, like, I think that's coming. <laughs> it's like having herpes. <laughs> it never goes away. <laughs> Hello guys, what's the difference says uh uh Isan to quarant between quarantine mm. and isolation. Mm. Well, I think they're quite similar, aren't they, Mr. Mm. Duncan? Uh, I think quarantine is forced. It can be. Yes, I think quite often with quarantine, you might be put into quarantine, even the, even if you don't want to be put into quarantine. So you might have a virus or something that people don't understand or maybe there isn't a cure for. So you might be forced. You might have no choice. You might be put in a hospital with a special facility a ward that only certain people can go into. I think the difference would be that you could uh, isolation means that you're definitely on your own for a period of time. Mm. But if you were quarantined, you could be on your own or you could be with other people. I think the difference is they are very similar in that there is a mm. period of time. They refer to a period of time uh, for the disease to uh, manifest itself mm, okay. which is two weeks in this case yeah. so so, to, so for the disease to come and then go it's suggesting that you need a 14 day period so you could say i'm going to isolate myself for 14 days uh, or the government might say you must isolate yourself for 14 days whereas the quar quarantine is the same mm. uh, the qu a quarantine period is, is is the same thing it's a period of time whereby you're waiting for the disease to come out mm. uh, and then pass away. Mm. Um, so they're very similar. I suppose in a more general term, isolation just means being alone. Yes. So I, 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 suppo I suppose really the, the, the difference is that one can be used in more ways. So to be isolated, maybe if you live in the countryside like us. So you might yes. say that we are both in isolation because we live far away from other people or far away from towns. You could use cities. the phrase, I'm quarantining myself. Mm. You could you could use the word like that. It just means that you're staying away for a period of time yes. so as not to infect other people. That's it. Antivirus software, uh, antivirus software on your computer. They will take something that is harmful to your computer yes. and they will they will quarantine it. So yes. quarantine can actually be used as a verb and also a noun. So the thing is in quarantine. It's taken away. It's isolated. The noun. And then you can quarantine something. So you quarantine it. You are putting it into quarantine. So antivirus software. I'm sure a lot of people understand that one because we all have computers, don't we? <laughs> if only we had antivirus software that could uh, that could kill off the coronavirus but of course it's in the air so we can't really conspiracy yes uh a lot of people have been suggesting over the last few days okay that this coronavirus and i've seen a few people saying this on the live chat yeah they are suggesting that this coronavirus is man-made uh and has somehow been released deliberately or accidentally but th so these are what we would call a conspiracy theories or conspiracy theories where people like to suggest that um, rather than it being a natural infection, some government have decided to release it or it was in a lab somewhere and it accidentally got out. But we don't think um, that. I don't think that. And Steve doesn't think that. I mean, th th there's there's, crazy, there's, really. there's no real evidence to suggest. Well, I mean, it could be true. Who, kn who knows, Mr. Duncan, what they're doing in okay. these labs behind closed right, doors? Then, Steve, Steve, you'd we stop. don't know, you'd, do we? Steve, 
Steve, just take a... It appears to be just, a natural yeah. infection. Steve, Steve, we, we are now yes. talking live on the internet. I know we are. This isn't recorded. I can't edit this out. No, so I'm just saying. I'm just repeating you, what people but, have said. Yes, Mr. but Duncan, you are... Don't worry. But you are starting <laughs> to sound like Alex Jones. No, I'm not. I'm not giving my opinion. I'm saying what other people are saying. There is the... We are just relaying information that is out there. Yes. Uh, that some people think this, some people don't. But I, but I'm I don't sure believe it. But I don't it will believe it. Come out. No, I don't. I, don't. I think but, it's a natural you, infection. But you kind of just said you did. No, I'm saying you said I don't, we don't believe it. Know. But, but who knows? It might be. Well, you well, never know something for certain, do you? You never know a hundred percent. There's always a little element of doubt there. You'll be so, the evidence would suggest. Okay, Steve. Steve. It is Steve, a natural infection. Steve. But, you know. Steve, take it down slightly. Who knows what we can do in Let's labs? Take it down. I'm just watching my uh, viewer figures slowly plummet. They're not. They're going up. <laughs> they are not. We're just relaying. We're just Ooh, talking. Yes. What everyone's talking about yes, at the moment. That's it. Try to relay information that first is true and useful. You'll be talking about that's a lot. I'll go in a minute, Mr. Duncan. He'll be talking about nine eleven in a minute. <laughs> I bet you think it's right, an right. inside job. Somebody suggested that uh, just. Well, I'm only talking about it because it is being discussed a lot. And I met, I've met with friends this week and they're all suggesting that this is, is, is because they've read it on the Internet. Yes. You can't believe everything you read on the Internet. No, don't believe anything. Uh, um, but the problem is, if it is man-made, Mr. Duncan, oh. then uh, governments are never going to admit it because they're all, they're all secretly experimenting away For crying in their out labs, loud. aren't they? So we'll never actually find out. No, it isn't uh, man-made. It's it's obviously that not man made because why lots is of, it obvious? Because it's floating around in the bloody air. Yes, but Anyone they could have could... created it and released oh, it accidentally. Goodness. Okay, then okay. I'm just saying it's a possibility, very remote possibility. I'm sorry, it's I'm back on Wednesday. By the way, it'll be the the real world on Wednesday, not the uh, conspiracy world. Well, I'm just I'm not suggesting it. It's just what people are talking about. Okay, then. That's all, Mr. Duncan. Okay. It's just what people are talking yes, about. Yes, but I'd, I'd rather talk about things that people are talking about that are real, real things. But conspiracies are... Cons it's real. <laughs> it's, a re it's a real thing that people are talking about. No, it isn't. People are talking about I, it. So if someone says something... That means it's a fact. No, I'm saying because people are it. talking about it. I'm not saying it's a fact or it isn't a fact. But it isn't real. I'm saying people are talking about but it. But if it, if it isn't a real thing, then it's not real. Well, we don't know if it's a real thing or not. It's a conspiracy theory, which... Yes, but there are lots yeah. of conspiracy theories. Well, I'm just talking about this one. Ros <laughs> Ro move on, yes, Mr. Ro Duncan. Roswell. People think that there are aliens in, in the middle of the desert in America. Yes. But uh, I mean, these people must be. I think they're. they're oh, oh. Well, who knows? We don't know, do we? We don't know. We don't really know. We can't go there. Yes. Uh, but government, governments like to put these. Uh, in fact, they think about the Roswell, the, the alien conspiracy. There is that the government, American government, deliberately put out the suggestion that it was. They had got aliens there to detract away from the fact that they were developing secret warplanes and uh, or, or, and spy satellites. So they were trying to, when when they saw strange things in the sky, which were okay. their experimental aircraft, they mm. were they they didn't want people to think it was them doing it. So they made the suggestion it okay. was in fact uh, aliens. So. What a load. We're on to aliens now. I think you've watched too many episodes of The X-Files, to be honest. So we are talking about words connected. Know. We are talking about words connected. <laughs> yes, there we go. Lewis to, says, just sharing uh, ideas, sorry. sharing ideas. You, sorry, <laughs> I'm talking. <laughs> How do you have conversations with normal people in life? Do, do you just talk over them whilst they're trying to talk to you? Only you. Isn't it? Yes, <laughs> I've noticed. Lockdown. <laughs> Oh, this is a good one. This sounds like something that's really dramatic. So when something is in lockdown, that in fact, that deserves a little bit of echo. It is in lockdown. Yes. So we're not in lockdown. We're anything other than being in lockdown. Yes. Although I'm thinking of putting Steve into isolation forever. 
<laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll have to learn how to do that from yourself because you've been in self-isolation for the last 10 years, haven't you, Mr Duncan? <laughs> I couldn't resist that. But you've admitted it. You've admitted it uh, last week that you've been in isolation well, for a number of years. OK, due then, to yes. your Due to your, your determination to have English thrust upon the world. <laughs> <laughs> your mission is to I improve everybody's English and the only way to do that is to isolate yourself for is 10 you, are years. Are you okay? Is your brain broken? Uh, probably. Yes, uh, Omar. Omar says... Oh, here's a good one. No, no, wait, wait. Can I just have Palmyra first of all? Okay. Palmyra, earthlings. So that's a word I used this morning on Facebook when I was advertising my live stream that you are watching right now on YouTube earthlings so that is an expression that means people on the planet earth so residents of the planet earth people who live on planet earth are earthlings you will often hear this used in science fiction films where the aliens are approaching the earth and they will say something like earthlings we are coming to invade your planet earthlings we will take over your planet that sort of thing so earthlings the people who live on the earth they are the earthlings yes what about a warm country can the heat kill the virus oh well it we don't really know yet um normally uh colds and flu are prevalent that means they're very common yes. in the winter months because uh, the cold and flu virus is very susceptible to being killed off by sunlight. Yes. It's the ultraviolet light that uh, inactivates the virus because a virus isn't actually alive. You shouldn't use the word kill the virus hmm. when you refer to a virus. You can kill a bacteria hmm. because a bacteria is actually alive, but so, a virus so is the bacteria is not like, alive. So the bacteria is like a little creature. Well, they 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 are described as living creatures, That's whereas it. a virus virus is not is is not described as a living creature. Hmm. It's not dead. It's just not alive. It's just like a it's inactive. It mm. doesn't do anything, move That's around. It. It's just a collection of proteins and, and genetic messages. It. it doesn't have a uh, hobby. It doesn't have any hobby. It doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't do, I don't know, karate in its spare time. It doesn't, it doesn't do stamp collecting. It doesn't go fishing at the weekends. So we say, I mean, we can say kill the virus, but strictly speaking, if you were talking in scientific terms, you wouldn't use the word kill for a virus because they're never actually, they're not classed as living beings. Okay. It's quite strange, quite incredible to, to, to realise that. OK. Um, but the heat... The ultraviolet light can certainly inactivate it. Hmm. Probably. We don't actually know. It's possibly likely that hmm. the disease will drop off in the hot months because heat and the sunlight will, will help to inactivate the virus. Hmm. Maybe. We don't actually know. Because they often say that sunlight is the best sanitizer, the best disinfectant is sunlight. Yes. So that's why if you go outside and you have a maybe you have a skin problem, maybe your skin is a little bit dry or you have a skin problem or maybe you are feeling a little under the weather. Sunlight can be very good for, for easing those problems, not necessarily curing them, but they can ease the problem. So sunlight is a very powerful thing. See, the cold and the flu always get less in the summer. We mm. don't really know why, but we think it's something to do with the sunlight or the heat. But of course, at the moment, there's a very big outbreak in Iran of this coronavirus. And Iran, of course, is a hot country. Mm. So, you know, it makes you maybe suggest to you that it won't go away in the summer months. So maybe um, it is something that is omnitemperate. So maybe it can live in different temperatures, hot or cold. Omnitemperate. Is that a word that you've just created, Mr. Duncan? I have just made up that word. Omnitemperate. Omnitemperate. It means something that can wow. bear hot or cold temperatures. It might even be a real word. If it isn't, it's my word. Somebody look it up. Omnitemperate. Omnitemperate. Omni or, no, or omnitemperate. 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 
Mm, interesting, yes. Mr. Duncan. Does mm. that word exist? Somebody <laughs> tell us. If it doesn't, you're claiming it yes, it's right mine. now. It's It'll mine. be I, the OED. I have copyright. Copyright on uh, omnitemperate. Marina says Steve loves conspiracy theories. Well, I do, but I, I'm not. I'm, I don't believe them all. No. Uh, you've got to have evidence. Where is the evidence? The problem these days is that it's very difficult to get evidence. So you don't believe that the Duke of Edinburgh killed Princess Diana then? I don't know. It, that's no. a conspiracy theory. A, <laughs> I don't believe that. Yes, that's, but it is a conspiracy theory. I think that's one of the, the, the craziest ones. I mean, Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, actually arranged for Princess Diana to die in a car crash. I think I think that's that's crazy. Yes, there you go, Tom. Eke, you're correct. Uh, the, the virus needs, well, it needs a host. It needs a cell to get into. Hmm. They're horrible things, viruses, because mm. they they get into your into your cells and then they take over the way that the your, that the cell works. In this case, with the coronavirus, it's your cells in your lining of your lung. It takes them over and gets the cell to make copies of itself, and it makes millions and millions of copies of itself inside the cell, and then it kills the cell and they burst out and then spread everywhere else. It's a bit like Alien. Uh, it's a bit like Alien, yes. It 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 it, cr it turns your cells into into a manufacturing plant for itself. Yeah, so it's like uh, a little factory. It's like it turns your, your cells into factories. Your body becomes a little factory for for all of these horrible things. I suppose we could mm. say Ebola. Yeah. Oh, yes. That was a virus, so that would work in the same yeah. way. Horrible a virus. Is the same. A, vi a virus oh. is the same. Ebola is worse. But with uh, that, just. Uh, the inside of your body just dissolves. But luckily, it, Ebola isn't that infectious. No. Not that contagious. It's not, actually quite difficult to pass it on. Not yet. Uh, but uh, with this one, of course, it is. Mm. With a cold or a flu, the, the cells that the, the virus is trying to latch onto is in, in the back of your throat. And that's where it multiplies. That's what it, that it loves those cells in, in, the, in the back of your throat. But uh, for this coronavirus, it's it's getting into your lungs. It likes the cells in, in your lung. Hence, you, you get all these breathing difficulties. Mm. Little bad news, a little bit of bad news. Oh. Prin princess, princess in London says we will have to postpone oh. our meeting for a cup of coffee because a lot of people won't be able to travel around, including us. Yes, so, yes, because we were going yes. to do a trip to London, weren't we? We're hoping to do that. Well, we were hoping. I was hoping next month it was going to be a big surprise, maybe in April or early May. We were going to go all the way to London to do a special live stream. However, <laughs> because of all of this that's going on at the moment, we've we've had to change our mind. Kem says Iran is not always a hot country. That's a good point. So yes. at the moment... What is the average temperature in Iran? Is hmm. it, are they going through a sort of a winter period? Is it hot yeah. at the moment or isn't it? I think it's in the twenties. Uh, I think it's in the twenties at the moment. Right, that's average. Yeah, so maybe it will go when the. So that's what we'll all have to do, Mr. Duncan, in the summer. We'll all have to go outside, and. Um, get some sunlight because that's supposed to be bad for your skin so about 10 minutes will be fine yes anyway yes that you can have snow in places like turkey so the middle east can have snow it's happened many times in recent years francesca says is it possible that the virus the coronavirus i presume you mean can survive for nine hours on the ground oh. so on a surface it actually <laughs> there's a lot of evidence to suggest that on your hands on a knife on a fork on a door handle the virus will actually live for a considerable period of time, maybe several days, not just hours, several days. Yeah. Can I just say, we're not doctors. I know, we're, but we're I'm not, just relaying we're, 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 the information yes, that I've read. You have to cover yourself, Steve. Oh, well, well, I am. I'm we are on the internet. <laughs> on everybody the, knows that. Well, not necessarily. <laughs> I don't think I don't think it is 2020 now, Steve. Well, I'm not giving people medical advice. No, I'm just but it uh, might be it might be taken as medical advice. So we do have to say that we have to cover ourselves. Okay. If someone goes out tonight and says, Mr. Steve said uh, I could do this. It's all because it's what he it's it's what he heard. This is very important. What I'm doing at the moment. I'm trying to stop ourselves from losing our YouTube channel. <laughs> just well, in I'm case, just what, what, it only takes one person to complain. 
to YouTube. Okay. I'll keep my mouth shut from we, now on. We, Mr. we live. We live in a world of hypersensitivity where everyone somewhere, someone somewhere is offended by this. But I'm not saying something that isn't already public mm. knowledge. We just have to be it's careful. Public knowledge yes. that the suggestion is that the virus will live for several days okay, then. on a door handle. That's it. So, so we have you heard. Need to be careful. Well, I, of course, Mr Duncan, <laughs> nobody really knows yet no. about this virus. That's it. But it appears that it will live for some considerable period of time uh, but on, we're not, we're on not, a surface. We're not, we're not doctors. No, well, we never said we were. No. Ooh. <laughs> Do you want me to go, Mr. Duncan? No, not at all. Stay. Stay as long as you want, Steve. You are always welcome on my live stream. There we go. It's Here's some toilet paper. In Iran, it some... snows there during the winter. Is it winter in Iran at the moment? That's what we'd like to know. Hmm. Uh, so there you go. So, yes, lots of anything we say, take it with a pinch of salt. Well, yes. Well, I'm just saying that we're not officially making these statements or claims. No, well, I, somebody asked the question. I was just answering it based That's on it. what I've read. That's it. That's it. So the information is not that. It's not Steve's expert advice. It's what he's heard. But this is the problem. Can I, can I just say the situation on YouTube is very serious at the moment. Their people are losing their channels all over the, all over the place. Are they? For saying things. Even something that's just a comment, an accidental comment, and their channel is gone. So, so don't don't even think that we are safe. Don't nobody is safe on YouTube anymore. Trust me, you can have your monetization taken away. You can have your channel taken away. So you have to be very careful. These the things that come out of here can get you into a lot of trouble sometimes. And, and even if you say nothing that's harmful. 2020 everyone this is it this is life in the 21st century are you enjoying it <laughs> any words that you want to uh, impart to well, our viewers first of all we, we never explain what lockdown means <laughs> do you remember okay. 20, 20 minutes ago we were talking about lockdown go on there mr duncan explain lockdown so if you have a lockdown it means you close an area or maybe you restrict the movement in an area so maybe you stop people from moving from one part of a town to another or you might stop people from moving from one town to another so one area is in lockdown it has been locked down it means there is a barrier or maybe something around the edge to stop you from going out or coming in. So something is on lockdown, would you say? Yes, exactly. It's, it's, it's like you've, you've got a padlock and you've stopped something from moving. That's it. It means nothing can move. Like closing the door and locking it and you can't get out. I like yeah, that so one. So uh, Cecilia says in South America at the moment, they've got hot summer weather there, but they've, still, but they've got the virus. Yes. You can also say seal off if you seal off something as well. So you might seal off the roads in and out of the city so people can't leave or come in. Mm, I like that one. So oh, we're very busy on the live chat, aren't we? Well, wow, so many people are here today. We are sharing our ideas and information that we have, Mr. Duncan. Don't panic. That's OK, CERN. But uh, I, I, I'm I'm on the inside of YouTube, you see. So so there are lots of things that go on on YouTube that I know about that other people don't know about because it's just the way it works. I'm, I'm not making claims. I'm just sharing information. That's it. That's it. But one person, that's all it takes. Just one person can complain and it's gone, gone forever. I'm just going to zip up, Mr. Well, no, Duncan. I'm, not, I'm, I'm not, going to say nothing. I'm not from telling now on. <laughs> Steve. I'm not telling you not to say things. I'm telling you to be careful in <laughs> I case. I don't think I said anything controversial. I didn't make up something new. No. 
but you don't it's you information don't, that's out there yes. it's been that's been knowledge for some time but you don't have to you, that's the problem well somebody asked the question so well, i'm yes. just, so i'm just relaying information okay. that's all mr don't just have to be don't panic we just have to be so careful <laughs> we have to don't forget to wash your hands and be careful you can't say that mr duncan but you can't say wash your hands i think you can no you can't i think where have you heard that i think every scientist on the planet you're is giving information that might not be correct it might come off might be taken off the air mr duncan people people in white coats have said that since we've been on air they might have changed all their recommendations and decided that washing your hands is the worst thing you can do okay so what do you do instead <laughs> i don't know lick your hands that's it there we go we get shut down i shouldn't say that no you shouldn't have say to, that mr duncan you, you have to bury yourself in your back garden <laughs> you have to dig a hole jump into it and then then put all the soil on top of yourself you we, we call it self-burial of course the problem with self-isolation is and they've already identified this in china okay because they've been uh in lockdown there for some period of time yes. in, <laughs> so Mr. Duncan in, 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 <gasps> well not the whole of China I know just <laughs> Wuhan yes. basically uh, I would and, love to, uh, you know what I would love to see I would love to see a billion well over a billion people locked down I think that would be amazing uh, China have done a very good job at uh, containing the virus they've done a fantastic job in mm. fact because it really hasn't spread outside that area at all uh, whereas Europe, it's just spreading everywhere. But anyway, the point I was making is that if you are having to tell people to maybe spend two weeks or four weeks, or in the UK they're now suggesting we may they may start suggesting to people over seventy to self isolate for three months, four there, months. Yes, four. so the, that's going to um, cause all sorts of mental health problems. Yes, because human beings are very sociable creatures. We like to talk to each other. How we will like you to manage? Communicate. How will you manage? Well, this will be our outlet. This will keep our mental health going. So it's going to be very difficult. But yes. maybe with social media, we can keep in touch. But elderly people, oh, okay. of course, who might not be into all the new technology. Uh, will really be on their own for yes. a long period of time so, and that will so they are saying upsetting. that so they are suggesting that old people elderly people over a certain age will have to stay in their house and be isolated for four months possibly possibly it may be a, a strategy that they decide to in part although having said that I, I would imagine a lot of the old people will be just staying in the house anyway because they can't walk more than five yards well i mean so well i mean my you know my mother's elderly your mother is an exception but she goes out every day and as do a lot of elderly people because we're sociable creatures we like yes. to talk to people we like to converse and if we can't do that that lifeline will be taken away it'll be very upsetting uh you know very upsetting for people mm. to be but, isolated but it's worth mentioning Steve, steve's mother is like superwoman so imagine superwoman when she's elderly and it's basically mr steve's mum she sh mr steve's mum should have a cape and fly through the air because she's amazing she's 90 next year and she's got more energy than steve and me put together oh don't go that far <laughs> <laughs> probably more than me <laughs> but uh, yes and a doctor told her last week two weeks ago she went for a checkup and the doctor said uh because my mother takes <laughs> virtually no pills at all for anything even okay. at that age which is very unusual and uh the doctor said you could live for another 15 years and <laughs> I don't know whether she was pleased or not to hear that. I don't think she really saw herself living to 105. Were you pleased? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Wonderful news, Mother. Wonderful news. Well, we're, we're, we are cheering everyone up today except Mr. Steve's mum. <laughs> Blimey. I used to think I will be over 70. Uh, I mean, I'll need somebody to look after me. This Probably. is weird. This is really weird. So there might be lots of generations of Steve's family all still alive, wandering around. You, you, your family might be the only people left alive on the planet. <laughs> Do you realise that? Yes. We'll have to call it Planet Steve. What is a post 
Arctic society. I don't know what that means, Theo Plati. Uh, what is a post panoptic society? Well, I suppose if you're talking pan about is everywhere, well, pan is population. So that's actually where the word pan comes from. It's actually de derived from the word population, populous. Pan. So the people. So maybe post panoptic, looking. maybe post panoptic, maybe after people or maybe after populations have died out. Or maybe maybe you're referring to globalization hmm. because they think uh, there's been some suggestion. This is something I've read, something I've read, nothing I'm making up myself mr duncan of course we live in this globalized society now where uh people don't grow all all their vegetables and and make everything they need in the country that they live in we're no. getting something from this country something from another and they think that maybe this uh virus will now uh rethink the whole way that they that that, uh, that um society works and how how uh economics works that mm. countries will now decide to become less globalized and will manufacture and grow all the things they need within their own country so, so how will we uh, grow our bananas here well we can't grow everything here but at the moment there's a lot of things that we import that we could actually manufacture here if we wanted to but we haven't because it's cheaper to to let china make them for us and then we ship them over but of course what this virus is is exposed this uh, crisis is that uh, everything's shutting down now uh, and uh, you can't get the goods and services that you wanted to have. It's going to be very difficult to to um, export and people and everything. It's, it's, it's really going to expose a lot of deficiencies in the way that uh, uh, the world of economics is working and has been working for the last 20 years it's all been going towards globalization hasn't it mm. but will that will that go away look at what's happened to the stock markets if you if you're investing in shares stocks and shares you've had a, a very rough ride this what if, week what if you want a new iphone so where will your iphone come from do well, you have at the to, moment, are they, are they made in China at the moment? They are made in China. Well, yes. they're manufactured in China for an American company. Yes. So, so neither of those things have anything to do with the UK. So we will have to build our own iPhones. We Maybe will have they will. To, we will have to have a British a British version <laughs> a British version of the iPhone. We will call it the Brit phone. So the Brit phone will be like an Apple iPhone, except it will be absolutely useless and crap. I said that. Yes, it will be. It'll be very interesting to see whether whether the order of things, the way the way society is operated, the way uh, economic activity is as has been operating for the last 20 years, this move towards globalization, whether that actually comes to an end or whether, it be, or, you know, because of what's happened with the virus, yes. uh, because suddenly it's really we're in a, in a it, we're in somewhere we've never been before in, we? in 100 years. We've never experienced this level of lockdown everywhere and mm. this crisis. Uh, due to a disease, how easily, how fragile, we were talking about this the other night, how fragile everything is, just with one new virus comes along and suddenly chaos is created. Yes, well, some uh, people have likened it to AIDS, of course. So when AIDS came along, people had to rethink their whole situation. So I suppose it's, a, it's similar to that, not exactly the same, but it's that same sudden appearance of something that changes everyone's perception and of course people start to panic they start to worry they go to the shops and buy lots of things for some reason i don't know why people are buying toilet paper lots and lots of toilet paper i don't know why maybe you can eat it we had a saw a program about that we saw a program not our not not our ideas uh and they tried to explain why people were buying toilet paper uh, because uh, and the reason they gave was it, it's when feel people feel unsafe, panicky, and they've got no control over something. Mm. They look for some kind of control somewhere. They want some control, and and toilet paper is a big thing which you see in a shop that you know you can buy lots of, and somehow because you've got that, it makes you feel as though you've got some control over a situation where, in effect, we have very little control. 
So it's just us, our primitive minds, trying to have some control over mm. over a chaotic situation. That's it. No, Stone Age man, because did you know that they had toilet paper in the Stone Age, but it was very uncomfortable. It was really uncomfortable. <laughs> Stone Age toilet paper used to cause a lot of harm and damage. It was it was very uncomfortable, apparently. Just leaves, I would imagine. See, that's it. The summer's coming. It, it is totally illogical. We do behave in these very illogical ways mm. when faced with a threat that we have no control over. And buying toilet paper in excessive amounts is, is an expression of that, is, is that sort of hysteria in a way. But, of course, you could just use a leaf. Yes. Because summer's coming. All the leaves are going to be coming out on the trees. That's and you it. could just use a leaf. Use newspaper. We talked about this last week. I feel like I'm watching last week's live stream. So this is Mr. Steve's toilet paper because it is a well-known fact that Mr. Steve has a very big bottom. Thank you very much, Mr. So, Duncan. So this is actually Mr. Steve's toilet paper. This is the toilet paper that Mr. Steve uses. Look at the size of it. It's you could be shut down for saying such a scandalous remark. I'm going to make a complaint to YouTube, it, Mr. Duncan, it, and shut your channel down actually, it looks for suggesting I've got a large bottom. It looks like you've been using it already. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> I'm not sure, Mr. So, Duncan. So there it is. There's Mr. Steve's toilet paper for his extra wide bottom. Look at that. It's huge. Thank you very much. Somebody said earlier that Montenegro mm -hmm. hasn't uh, given any information about coronavirus cases like in their country. Um, there's a very good there's a lot of very good websites showing you if, if you really are the sort of person that likes to monitor this situation minute by minute. Uh, you can become a bit obsessed with it. I can't you. A bit, but there is a website where it's showing you. Um, every country and the number of cases, number of deaths, number of recoveries. And I've got into the habit of looking at it every day. It's a bit mm. obsessive. I think it's causing a bit too much stress, which is the opposite of what you need at the moment because you want your immune system to be working in peak order and you don't want stress. Can I just... Sugar, that was the other thing. Yes, okay. Sugar's bad for your immune system, apparently. <laughs> apparently. Can I just say that I'm not panicking. You may have noticed something. I always have a smile on my face. I'm, I always see the bright side, the funny side, the humorous side. And, and I think I will stay healthy because of that. So because of my attitude, whereas Steve, he's always worrying about it. He thinks that the coronavirus is coming towards us like like an army. No, I don't think like that, Mr Duncan. But of course, because you spend a lot of time here in your studio working at home i'm going to be the one that brings it into the house you are um i know i always get your bugs well i don't want to give you this one mr duncan uh panopticism was a french intellectual was used by a french intellectual uh michael Foucault. it says people are being watched by someone and humanity lives in a big prison. Oh, this is like what you were watching on the uh, on the internet. There we go. It's watching everywhere. Some what watching optic eyes. Somebody's watching from everywhere. Yeah. So so, may, so maybe this this we're all like humanity is is really imprisoned, and we're all just running around like rats in a laboratory. There is there is a theory, isn't I, there? Steve spends too much time on the internet. By the way, he you spend far too much time clicking on websites that, that have lots of these strange ideas. The other night I came upstairs and I caught Mr. Steve. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Careful I, I what caught, you say. I caught Mr. Steve. He was on the internet and he was looking at a certain website. <laughs> no, it wasn't that. It wasn't anything like that. He did have his trousers on, fortunately. But Although I was getting quite excited. He was getting excited, however, about it. And, and this was th th he was watching a video where there was someone talking about the fact that none of this is real. So all of this, everything that's happening. So w when when you when you walk into the kitchen to make a cup of tea, when you go upstairs to the toilet, when you go to the supermarket to buy a can of beans, apparently it's all it's all in a computer. 
it's it's just a computer simulation so all of it is not real oh. this is this is what i caught steve watching the other night i was reading i've heard this theory before uh but that's a bit depressing it is depressing uh, and also not true well we don't know oh we don't know how do we know i feel like i know but Surely, you can never know. But you must know. One hundred percent. There must be. There must be sort of a certain amount of knowledge that we have that says this is real. There Look, isn't. I can reach out. I'm touching you now. So there is Mr. Steve yeah, right, right next to me. So I, I know you're there. I can feel you with my fingers. Yes. But uh, if you had a computer with infinite computing ability, we don't. Uh, we don't, but we will do in about 30 years' time, apparently. OK. Uh, infinite computing power, then you could create anything. OK. And, if, and a race could have created this all in a computer simulation. Uh, and let's hope not. Okay. Um, but so, we're having fun, so... Yes, you know. yes. well, some of us are. <laughs> there was a comment here which I wanted to... Uh, Ooh, there's a blackbird right there. There's the blackbird. Can you see a little blackbird there? That is a male blackbird. And he is busy at the moment. He is trying to find a lady blackbird to mate with. So he's looking at the moment for a lady blackbird and then he can mate and they can build a little nest where they can lay their eggs and raise some little chicks. So there it is, nature happening right now outside my studio window as we speak. As we speak, there it is, nature taking place. So thank you, thank you, Kem or Sem, for that uh, for that explanation there of panopticism. Mm. I think I pronounced that correctly. So That's maybe something. maybe this isn't even real. So everything around you, when you when you go to your window and look outside, all of that is just in a computer. Well, that's, right, that's not the same thing. So uh, none of it's real. Well, I'm, we're that, just we're just computers. I thought we've got. Right, that's not what panopticism is, though. No, that's I didn't say that. No, that's, that's like that's like we're all imprisoned. That's it. Well, of course, uh, religion. You could say religion was that, could <laughs> you? I mean, you would be so. <laughs> presumably, we're being oh, watched, whoa, whoa, whoa. Steve, aren't we? And everything being Steve, judged by that, everything. That is one heck of a can of worms you are opening there. Let's. Well, is that let's, an let's, example oh, of panopticism? Yes, probably not. I don't know. No, Maybe let's just it is. let's just say say it isn't. So aliens then, aliens are watching us, okay. a big experiment. Uh, there's a joke. I had a nightmare when I couldn't wipe my ass. It was the shittiest dream ever. <laughs> Thank you, Brenda. Thank you, Brenda. We're just balancing. We're, we're getting very serious today, so that's just... That's just Thank you. Thank you for encouraging Steve to say some swear words. We did, we did enjoy that. Thank you very much. Mr Duncan, I like the way you think. It's like your images in your brain yes would you like to live inside my brain for one hour trust me it's 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 a very busy area a very busy place indeed uh, brenda's got another joke here <laughs> Bre thank you brenda you're you're can, giving us some uh, can, so can, you're lightening the mood can you just make jokes that don't involve swearing why couldn't the toilet paper cross the road it got stuck in a crack. <laughs> actually, that was <laughs> that's actually quite funny. Where Thank you, Brenda. Let me just find some. Um, where there? I'm sure I've got some laughter here. Where are we? So yes. So why did the why couldn't why couldn't the toilet paper cross the road because it got stuck in a crack? <laughs> <laughs> that's better. Thank you, Brenda. Any more toilet jokes will be welcome. We like that one. We like that joke. Very good. That's cheered me up. My humour has been lifted into the sky. Jamila says, uh, do you have to wear a mask while at work? Well, in the UK, it's quite obvious. No, practically nobody is wearing a mask in the yes. UK. The only people wearing masks are, well, Chinese people or people from Asia. Yes. To be honest. I mean, I'm not saying that to be racist. I'm just saying the only people I've seen, even here in Much Wenlock a few days ago, there were a couple of people from Asia. I'm not saying they were Chinese, but they were from Asia and they had face masks on. So I guess they were tourists, but they were wearing face masks. So I haven't seen anyone 
<laughs> I really have to be so careful what I say. Just one person on Twitter. It's that's all it takes. Just one person on Twitter can end your career completely. But yes, you know what I mean. So You're I haven't encouraging them. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say anything nowadays. I'm just trying to make a point that I haven't seen many people wearing masks. British people, British English people. But then you can you could have Asian people born in Britain who might be wearing. It's just so difficult nowadays. We're just making it. We're just making you know that's our observation. Yes, but yes. Uh, Although it has been shown, apparently, the evidence would suggest that the masks don't really protect you. OK. They're probably, apparently, the evidence suggests, not me, not me, I'm not making this up. Where is the Just evidence? reading around, reading, it's been yes. on the news, been on the television, it's okay. on the internet. Oh, well, it must be true then. That the, <laughs> the face masks, well, this is scientists telling you. Uh, the face mask, well, if you've got the virus, it will help to stop you spreading it because if you sneezed there would be a lot of the droplets would be contained within the mask but they're not particularly effective uh, because when they get damp and wet from your moisture apparently they're not very very effective I think they're only effective for about 10 minutes and then they're pretty useless and there's gaps around the edge some protection but probably probably yes. not very good that's it that evidence may change but at the moment, it looks like they're not much use. It, it's fair to say that we don't really actually 100 percent know what's going on. But I suppose I suppose my advice would be, Steve, my advice would be. Keep calm and wash your hands. That's uh, something that we're seeing. That's it. I think that is the best advice. Keep calm and wash your hands. And yes. I think that's it. So as long as you keep clean, and make sure that you're not spreading any germs or receiving any germs from someone else, which you won't be because the other people will be doing the same thing. Something I read interesting, which I thought was quite interesting today as well, was that, um, of course, normally flu is being spread around at this time of the year in, in many countries uh, during the winter months. Um, and they've already noted in some of the countries where this self-isolation or this lockdown has been taking place mm. that the number of cases of flu has dropped dramatically as well, uh, which just goes to show that um, normally we've got flu spreading around and we, and we don't necessarily take precautions to stop other people getting it. Mm. Uh, and uh, just by having this lockdown, it's stopping flu as well. Mm. Uh, which of course is is very good. How many people in the UK were infected? I think it. Well, I think we're up to about nine hundred now, confirmed cases. That many? I think so. Yes. And uh, the fatalities are still quite low. Is it about eleven? I think no, but I think about twenty. Twenty, I think so far 20, in the UK. Yes. Twenty. So, yes. So a, a few hundred cases confirmed and a few 20 about 20 deaths about 20 so still much so lower far. still much lower than many other countries around the world but it's it's early you see it's early it's here because we're an island we're a little island floating around in the sea and and now not many people are able to fly in and out so it will take a little longer to to actually establish here in the country but there are cases and even in this area, Steve, well, in this area, there yes. are there are three, three confirmed cases of coronavirus. Three doctor surgeries not far from us have had people go into their doctor surgery and they're not supposed to go in. If you if you've been abroad on holiday, the advice is do not go into your doctors because mm. you might infect other people. Yes. But of course, people either haven't been watching the news or are quite selfish and decide they're going to go anyway. Um, and uh, some people have gone in with temperatures, gone to the hospital and they've been tested and they're positive. Uh, so, yes, there are cases everywhere. Of course, the, although we've, we've detected through testing, you see, that's the other thing, because we're not testing everybody. See, different countries are doing different things. Um, South Korea have got, I think, the highest testing rate of any country mm. outside China. So they're testing thousands and thousands of people so they whereas in the uk we're not testing that many at the moment 
And there has been a bit of criticism about that. So although we've detected about 900 cases, in reality, they think that the number of cases is at least 10 times higher than that. Mm. So we've probably got probably 10,000 cases. But Again. Because we're not doing that much testing we don't know the exact oh. figure whereas they in south korea they're testing anybody that moves That's it. Uh, so that they can get a good picture of how the disease is spreading and who should be isolated etc let's go back to the live chat because we are leaving in a moment we've gone oh. way way over two it's hours gone four o'clock mr duncan yes that's what that's i didn't know it was that late yes <laughs> you, you well you've been enjoying yourself obviously yes Introverts, says uh, a man, introverts would be loving what's happening now. Yes. <laughs> so good. An introvert is somebody that likes to keep themselves to themselves. They like to stay away from other people. Uh, yes. It's, well, it's perfect. I don't think, I uh, don't know whether introversion, it, 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 it just means somebody who keeps themselves to themselves. Maybe they don't talk a lot. It doesn't necessarily mean that they don't socialize as much but probably yes i probably would do okay so they're not well so, it's a broad so, yeah. it's a broad word it's introvert a broad word, it's yes. a broad word so introvert is a person who doesn't like to speak to other people or mix with other people they tend to keep themselves to themselves and quite often they might stay at home they they might not have a busy social life so i'm not judging i'm just saying that's mm. that's generally what the term means so having to self-isolate might be brilliant if you don't like people if yes. you don't like socializing uh, me included by the way I'm, I'm feeling quite excited i'm looking forward to being here every day because i can't go out the house and then i can spend every day with you here on youtube life is normal for you nothing changes we could have a great time together we can have our coronavirus live stream talking to each other chatting every day so however bad things get, I'll still be here. I'll be here for you. Even though the virus spreads, I'll be here for you. Even some people will not be well. I'll be here. Matt K. Boom. For you. Matt K. Boom has been in Bristol for two weeks. OK. Wanted to stay for nine weeks, but he's going back because of a possible travel ban. Mm. Yes. Well, yes, your country. Um, uh, obviously, it looks like you're from Germany. Um, may not let you back in if you don't go back soon. You may be stuck here in the UK. Oh, the latest update apparently here in the UK: one thousand three hundred and seventy-two cases in the yes. UK. Thirty-five people now have sadly died. Well, have we? Oh, that's gone up while while we've been on air. That's yeah. gone up then. So while we've been standing here. So about a week ago, we only had about a hundred cases, didn't we? something like that so in a week it's already gone up dramatically so we're, we're going to see we're going to be in the same situation as, as Italy and Spain probably fairly quickly you know what um, I bet there are a lot of people who are so sick and tired and bored listening to the coronavirus news and everyone talking about it so I would imagine a lot, a lot of people are really sick and tired. They are they're not sick physically. They just feel annoyed that they have to keep listening to people talking about coronavirus. To be honest, I'm sick of it. I, I, you put the news on and it's like all you hear now, Steve, is blah, 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 coronavirus, blah, yes. blah, blah, self-isolation, blah, 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 virus, blah, blah, blah. It's just the same things over, over and over again. So, yes, it's driving me crazy as well. Huang makes a comment there about the common cold. A lot of it. I think what you mean there, Huang N H, is that every year thousands of people die from the flu. Mm. Not the common common cold doesn't kill you. Yeah, I think you mean the flu. Mm. And that is true. To put it in perspective, every year in the UK, about seven or eight thousand people die from flu. But that's not reported. But of course, the, the issue here is that we don't know how many people could die from this new virus. Mm. And that is on top of the flu as well. Yes. So, so we are, we're dealing that's with why it's so serious. We're dealing with something that's unknown. Yes. We know about flu, but we don't know about this particular virus. So we don't know what it can do. We are still learning about what it can do. We know certain things. We are, we're trying to work out what the effect will be over 
a long period of time but really a lot of people don't know what will happen so that's the difference and of course people can be vaccinated and people can be protected from flu however again just like with coronavirus it's vulnerable people people over a certain age who are more likely to become very ill and die whether it's flu or coronavirus and lewis makes the makes a point there he's, he's touching on a point there that these uh, types of viruses quite often um don't last for a long period of time mm -hmm. so quite often the like with the flu you'll get the virus will go into the population and then it will subside it will go away so mm. that's what of course people are hoping that the virus will have its day it'll have a bit of a splurge a lot of people will become infected and then it will just naturally die out after a few months mm. it may happen but we don't know how this virus might behave yet and in terms of a vaccine that's at least 18 months away yes and by that time lewis you make the point there the vaccine may be fairly irrelevant because it may have spread everywhere throughout the world and 80 yes. percent of us may in fact have developed natural immunity and we don't need the vaccine anyway so so the vaccine is only useful if people haven't really been affected by it or if they can now protect themselves naturally yes. with their own immunity i read today that by the time the vaccine comes out this disease may be gone anyway yes. naturally have you heard this morning what some of the newspapers are saying no they reckon it'll be april what they 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 say that it's april they're now doing human tests oh well yeah they are they are probably they have got trials on ongoing okay uh that but that's just but it takes such a long time to do the trials and to make sure mm. that it's safe and effective mm. and then manufacture it in large quantities it's going to be at least 18 months they think this isn't mm. me saying this before an effective vaccine in large quantities will be available anyway i, I think we should go do you know uh, why because we've been on now for two hours and 15 minutes and there's the spot of hope that we will end with mr duncan that this virus might just blow itself out yes after a few months and then by the time the summer here is gone we may be all safe yes. and well look at that spring is definitely here outside Spring is on the way look, in the uk look at that that is the view right now out of my studio window that is a live view blossom on the tree blossom on the trees the sheep in the distance it's feeling warmer the sky is blue the sun is shining the birds are singing building nests that's it the hope ho is hope is there that's we can it. touch and feel hope that's it i feel like i'm i'm on Noah's Ark I open the window to let the dove out and then the dove comes back with a little what what does it come back with isn't isn't it a branch from an olive tree is it yes isn't, isn't that yes. where the olive branch comes from as a as a phrase <laughs> mm. 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 yes I'm right. I think you think right so that's it so mm. we're ending on a message of mm. hope message of that, hope uh, we need hope that's sometimes hope well we're all we're all going to uh, what they're suggesting in the media we've all got to this is a a worldwide not just a national crisis it's a it's a crisis for, for humanity global and uh, we 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 need to all come together don't we and protect the most vulnerable in society mm. uh, uh, for as long as possible mm. and uh, minimize the, the effects on, on people's health Yes. and the number of deaths anyway um, as i said whatever happens i will be here i'm sure mr steve will join I will. sometimes so whatever happens i will be here right here on youtube talking to you even if even if i'm on a machine keeping me alive mr duncan don't say that <laughs> i will still be here <laughs> even if it's just my brain in a jar it might, it might be just my brain floating around in a little jar hello my name is mr duncan and now <laughs> i'm just a brain in a jar today we are going to learn about <laughs> adjectives <laughs> see so yes i will be here whatever happens and on that note i will go into the kitchen i will let you wrap up i will put the kettle on i'm very hungry and uh, prepare the tea cakes uh, hot crust bun for you and two cups of tea Ooh. 
and look forward to seeing you all again next week and i think we can sit outside really yes i think so shall Might we to... shall we sit outside is it safe i think so i think we can sit outside our house and we will watch the birds mating because and we'll dodge the viruses as they come towards us that's it so if there are any may, maybe well let's just hope we don't get bird flu ah. that's gone away bird flu's gone away at the moment if Good. it could come back Good. bye bye everybody and see you next week there goes mr steve and i will also be going in a moment that was a very busy one by the way thanks steve it's been very thought provoking and some people think that we argue but we don't really we're just having fun it's fun okay even though i have a feeling that mr steve is going to put some rat poison on my hot crust bun but besides that yes i it's 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 just a bit of fun okay thanks a lot for your company thank you very much thank you massimo thank you very much to maria christina frey noemi sam bluebirds beatriz also harley quang hello to you as well thank you very much for watching i hope you will have a nice cup of tea and something nice to eat if you feel hungry then why not treat yourself and don't forget i am back with you on wednesday i have two days of rest <laughs> i will be locking myself away inside my little room <laughs> my airtight room which might not be a good idea actually thinking about it so next wednesday i will be back with you again which will be the 18th if i'm not mistaken already we are over halfway through march i can't believe it thanks for your company thank you irene thank you also guadalupe thank you mr bruno thank you cecilia i will see you again on wednesday thanks a lot for your company this is mr duncan and on behalf of mr steve saying thanks for watching i hope you've had a good day I hope you've enjoyed this live stream and I hope it has cheered you up. Take care, stay safe, don't forget to wash your hands and of course, until the next time we meet here on YouTube, you know what's coming next. Yes, you do.